Hey everyone, uh, hope you're all doing awesome today. Uh, today is May 8th, 2016. It is Mother's Day, so um, I hope all of you wished your mother a wonderful Mother's Day. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you're all enjoying it. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you about um, the Haas effect. Now, what is that word I, that guy just said? That word I just said is called the Haas effect. And it used to be in Wikipedia, but now it's redirecting into the precedence effect, which inevitably is the same thing. Um, since I'll read this from Wikipedia, the Haas effect redirects here. So this used to say Haas effect, now it says precedence effect. Um, Okay, so the, the precedence effect, or law of the first wavefront, is a binaural psychoacoustic effect. And what it is, is when a sound is followed by another sound separated by a sufficiently short time delay, listeners perceive a single fused auditory image. Its perceived um, spatial location is dominated by the location of the first arriving sound. So the lagging sound also affects the perceived location. However, its, its effect is suppressed by the first arriving sound. So who created it? Um, the Haas effect was a psychoacoustic effect that was first described in 1949 by a gentleman named Helmut Haas in his PhD thesis. He uh, discovered this and, and used it. And a lot of records and um, engineers, producers, um, created records with the Haas effect later on to give it a uh, wider stereo image. And now, you know, you're going to hear a lot of this in pretty much all modern music. Um, for instance, right now, my voice is in mono. Um, you can see this correlation here. Um, as this, as I speak, you see this line that's going dead in the center. Um, it's, it's center. Uh, it's not left, it's not right. Now watch what happens when I pan myself. I'm just going to go ahead and pan myself left. And you can see I'm going left. I'm all the way to the left now. And if I go to the right, I'm all the way to the right now. Um, and so what I am doing is I'm just in the center and I'm mono. Now I'm going to show you a little trick that works on vocals, guitars, synthesizers, drums. I don't know if you'd want to do it on drums, but maybe you would. For certain things, the Haas effect is great. If you're looking for a little bit extra widening uh, in your stereo image, this is a great effect. I use it almost in every track. Um, and I thought you should know about it if you didn't already. So check it out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and on my tutorial uh, microphone, which is just me talking right now as I'm doing my screencast, I'm going to go ahead and add a delay. And I'm going to go to delay and sample delay and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and choose mono to stereo okay so I added the effect you don't hear anything it hasn't changed the reason it hasn't changed is because I haven't touched any of the dials here the left delay or the right delay and I could walk you through this interface real quick it's not that complicated um, move that out of the way bring this one over in the center um, so you have basically an on off switch you have a delay left that works in uh, samples or milliseconds and you have a delay right and then you also have a link left and right so as I move both of them they're just linked but in this case to do the Haas effect you want to just basically keep the default setting but what you want to do is switch over to the different unit. You, you don't want samples, although you could use them, you should use milliseconds. And then, let me show you something else here. This graph right here depicts basically the pan laws using the Haas effect. And so, since you're not physically panning your pan pots, right, so I'm not going over here and going like this or like that. I'm going to keep that all in the center and I'm going to use a perceived effect called the Haas effect or the perceived effect um, and I'm going to change the width 
of my voice based on that. And so let's go back to this graph and you can see if I want to do a sort of a uh, hard right and left, it would be around 0 0.8, 0 0.8 milliseconds. So let's just see what that sounds like on my voice. I'll just do it to the one channel because we want to keep the other one all the way zero milliseconds. We don't want any delay on the left. We want delay on the right. Now you could do the opposite. I could do delay on the left and keep the right at zero milliseconds. But in this case, in this example, I'm just going to show you the, 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 delaying, <laughs> the delaying of the right channel, which will create the Haas effect. So let's try that. Let's do 0.8. And as I talk, things just got really strange, didn't they? Yes. They feel there's a wider stereo image, and this graph right over here explains this and kind of shows this. You see this? So basically, the stereo image has changed by just 0.8 milliseconds, but it's created this enormous widening effect to my voice. Now, it seems like I'm a little to the left. Um, so let's just bring this down. Now I'm in headphones. This is probably the better way to hear it. Um, I'm listening in headphones now. I'm monitoring that way. If not, try to have um, you know a nice quiet room, very good studio acoustics, great monitors with a great balance, um, and you should be able to heal, hear this effect. You can definitely hear this effect on guitars and... Um, and uh, synth instruments, and definitely vocals on pretty much any speaker. I just want, want to point this out to, uh, to kind of show the effect and, and what kind of uh, sounds you're looking for to hear during this tutorial. Might be best to use headphones. But let's just lower this down. So I'm going to go from, uh, let's put this around 0.5. Actually, I'll just go through all of them. Let's do 0.7, and I'll keep talking, and we'll do 0.6, and I'll keep talking. And then we'll do 0.5, and I'll keep talking. Pay attention to this graph over here. And also do 0.4, and I'll keep talking over here. And 0.3. Okay, so now we're basically the pan is like right there and right there. We'll do 0.2. Just a little bit has a huge effect. And we'll do 0.1. So we're getting closer to the, the mono signal again. You can hear it. It's still definitely a stereo signal though now. And let's just do zero, go back to mono. So there's the difference. So let's try that again. Let's say 0.8. Okay, it's a pretty big difference. Let's just go, let's toggle this on and off now. As I'm talking, let's just toggle it on and off. On, off, on, off. So there you go. So that's the Haas effect. Now, that's just vocals. Let's try to add this to, let's say, this, um, this little uh, sample audio I have here. So we have a normal, um, we have a, uh, I'm using Apple Loops, by the way. Let's just close out this stuff. Let's close this one out, bring this one into the center, because I'm going to need to show you what's going on here. Um, okay, so for the drums itself, this is the first track of the drums. Let's just listen to what this sounds like. Okay, so you can see it's just, it's in the center, it's mono mainly, it's got a little bit of variation of stereo width to it, um, you know, and that's great. That's what you want out of drums. Um, let's go on to the bass. The bass sounds like this. Watch the graph, please. Okay, so as you can see, it's got a little bit of stereo, a little bit of comb filtering going on as well, I've heard. But regardless of that, it's just the effect. It's just the bass. Um, this was recorded again through Apple Loops. This is all Apple Loops samples. You can find these um, in your own library as long as you download, I believe, the extra content that Logic provides. Um, again, these effects, I don't, there's no Haas effect on, on, the, on the drums yet the bass or this lead guitar. Now let's take a head let's take a listen to this lead guitar on its own. Okay, so notice right away that this is just mono. There's no stereo uh, stereo width to any part of this this track. Okay, 
Okay. Uh, so let's let's add some Haas effect to the lead guitar. Since we don't really have to worry about the drums or the bass, we kind of leave those where they're at. All right. Um, we want those tight into the center, but you know the the lead guitar. Sometimes you want to kind of like move it in this in the uh, acoustic um, stereo field. You want to kind of position it a certain way. So let's do that through the Haas effect. You could do that through panning. Definitely could do that through panning. But in this case, we're just going to widen it up a little bit. So let's do that. Let's add. Uh, let's do the same thing. We'll go back to delay. We we'll go to sample delay. Now you could use um, the tape delay, the stereo delay, or pretty much any of these. I like to personally use the sample delay just because it has the milliseconds, um, and it's really easy to kind of understand. It's so simple. So I typically go open it up, I go to milliseconds, and then I start changing this around. But in this case, I'm going to do the left. So it's going to show you the difference here. So we'll do that again. I'm just going to go ahead and play it and play around with some of these numbers. Now you really don't want to go past 0.8, although to, to this is basically the pan approximate correlation with a panning knob. This is kind of like if you were going to, instead of turning the pan itself, this is kind of what this diagram depicts is, uh, whoops, this diagram is basically showing you um, the ability to pan using the Haas effect. Now, you could go beyond this, it's fine. You just don't want to go probably past around 30 milliseconds because then, or maybe 50 milliseconds, there's a lot of people who will say random numbers for many things, but there is a science behind this. It's math. It's definitely, um, the, t the it's delay. So you will start getting comb filtering um, and phase issues and, and all kinds of things that will happen. So, and I can demonstrate that. I'll just bring this up super high real quick and show you what that sounds like on just the uh, disco trance lead guitar. Here we go. Okay, obviously that's extreme. It doesn't even sound uh, necessarily rhythmic. If that's the effect you're going for, that's that's great, and you can use that all day long or however you like. But for this example, we're just going to do the Haas effect. So let's add, let's make this hard right, hard left. So we'll say 0.8. Let's see what this sounds like. Okay, notice the graph. We're definitely moving things around in this in the uh, stereo field. So let's try that with it bypassed. And let's turn it back on. Bypassed. All right, so there you go. That's the Haas effect. Let's put it all together. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, let's put that back. All right, guys, there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Please comment. Please follow. Please reach out to me. Please listen, please have a good day, please keep on mixing, please, please, please be awesome. Hopefully this helped you, um, and stay tuned for more. Thanks.